These are loco beef ribs. Watch me explore this new Argentinian barbecue method. Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. Yes, it starts with this, beef ribs. As you can see, they're not ordinary beef ribs. Yesterday, I went to my butcher, I picked up this beautiful piece of beef and asked him to cut it for me. Of course, he has special tools to do that, but the idea behind it is that the bones are cut. Now you might wonder, why did you cut the bones? Why? And I will tell you all about this method, but first I wanna prep these beef ribs and get them on the barbecue. Of course I'm gonna get rid of any bone dust that sits on the ribs, just brush it off. And then it's time I add flavor to it. As you can see, it's quite a big piece of meat. And to get some flavor on, I'm gonna drizzle on a little bit of olive oil. Not too much, just a tiny layer. This is my new fancy thing. I love it. I picked this up when I was in Spain. Mouth blown. Hand geblazen. Hand gemaakt. Artisan. <laughs> That's what this is. And I can dose the amount that I want, then just rub it in and use it as a, a little bit of glue to help my seasoning stick to the meat. There we go. Once we start cooking, a lot of it will render off and it will disappear. Especially the olive oil flavors. When we start heating it up, it will kind of disappear. You won't be able to taste it especially not with the overpowering flavors of the beef. So it really just acts like an agent. I'll be using the Pitmasterix Texas Barbecue Rub. This is a pre-production model, but it will be out in the stores real soon at the latest in December. So make sure to ask your barbecue store if they have the Pitmasterix Barbecue Rub on stock. And if they haven't heard of it yet, just nod your head like this. If you want the recipe for this, because you're unable to buy it, of course, we put it on our website. So go check it out, pitmasterx.com. It is all about the pepper, salt, and a little bit of garlic and onion powder. Honest flavors that are really gonna make the beef pop. There we go, of course, I'm gonna season the other side as well. In the meantime, you and me can talk about why I am so excited about this new beef rib method. One of my favorite channels to watch is the Logo X Alasada, and I have no clue what they're saying because it's in Spanish, Argentinian. But the technique that Lucius uses in his videos is just really inspiring because they have a completely different way compared with the American style or the European style. So I was watching one of his videos and he used a technique to portion his beef ribs. And that portioning happened by cutting the beef up. Not the meat, only the ribs. So now we have this genius version where we have a bite-sized piece of meat while it's still connected. We can cook this as a whole while at the same time we have our portions ready. Let's fire up the barbecue so I can show you exactly what I mean and how this really works. I'll be cooking on the Napoleon Professional Charcoal Grill. And this is a special grill. The special feature is this charcoal bed, which I can lower with this handle. I basically have an Argentinian asado style grill. I'm gonna load up a chimney starter full with a light charcoal, take a couple of fire starters and fire up the chimney starter. The charcoal is now almost fully started up. You can see the red glowing embers up to about here. Now we don't need to get it fully hot white in charcoal because we want a low moderate heat. A little bit of unlit charcoal in every basket and a little bit of lit charcoal in every basket. I use my Napoleon rake to spread it out. Now this might not seem like a lot, but the thing that you have to check is, can you put your hand over the fire direct and keep it there for at least seven to eight seconds, preferably even longer. And if I put my hands over this, it's still a little bit on the hot side. I'm going to let it come down just a little bit. But now I'm gonna put on the grill grate so we can get them pre-seasoned. And that way we're all set once we got the desired temperature. Time to put the beef ribs on. I'm starting with the ribs pointing downwards and with this beautiful piece of meat. And look at the sheer size of this. <laughs> it is so big. Of course, I want to keep my eye on the temperature and know exactly what's going on. I don't want to grill this. I don't want to burn it. I don't want it to last for, I don't know, 30 hours in the cook. I want this to be done perfect. And that's why I'm going to use the new Meter 2 Plus. They now have this tip so you can grill with it. It's waterproof. I already put it in my dishwasher. I already put it in my deep fryer. It all works. 
This thing is a beast. Oh, oh, and it measures now in a decimal uh, accuracy. So let's get it in and make sure you put it in almost all the way. There we go. Of course, I'll be using the meter app and we're gonna go for rows and then we're looking for the brisket because that's the most comparable thing that we can have. I want my brisket to be cooked at 92 degrees Celsius. So that's what we're gonna do. Hit start and now we just, as you can see, look, now you can see it. It's only 31 degrees Celsius. That's because we got so much distance between the charcoal and the meat. Once we close the lid, it will raise up, but we'll be grilling this over direct heat. Keep our eye on that temperature. Of course, I want this to go up about 120 degrees on the surrounding temperature of the thermometer and the meat until we get our core temperature up all the way to 92 degrees core temp. A part of the technique that the Argentinians use is to keep the outside of their meat wet by spraying it with, for instance, herbs in a plastic bottle. But there's another way to do it. And that is by using your old coffee machine. These things are an absolute magical device because you have a filter. And in this filter, you can put some fresh herbs, like fresh thyme. Just bruise it up a little bit, then drip it in. Some rosemary, a little bit of sage, and make sure you bruise it real good so it releases its etherical oils instantly. To this, I'm going to add two tablespoons of the Texas Pitmaster Rex barbecue rub that we also put on the beef ribs. Since there's onion and garlic and pepper in it, and of course salt, it's gonna taste freaking delicious. Now we'll close that lid, add half a liter or two cups of water to it, and then for a little extra craziness, I'm going to open up the glass jar and add half a liter of red wine to it. Then this liquid goes into my spray bottle. The lid goes on, a couple of pumps, and now we have a spray. And that spray can go on our beef ribs once it starts drying out on the outside, and at the same time, we're adding flavor to the beef ribs. The most challenging thing is to maintain a stable temperature throughout. That's why I keep on adding charcoal in small amounts and making sure that I spread them out evenly, fighting off flare-ups at the same time so that we get a nice and even cook. If the temperature in your barbecue starts to spike, this is also a great way to lower the temperature. That moisture inside the barbecue will reduce the temperature and will prevent flare-ups at the same time. You may need to repeat this a couple of times. Just make sure you keep your eye on the meat to check that it doesn't burn up. The meter app just told me that it's time to take the beef ribs off. 92 degrees Celsius core temperature and look at that. Now the bark got a little bit darker than I expected and that has to do with the red wine in combination with the grilling of course. That's gonna give us a much darker edge on the meat. But since it's ready, let's first take it off so it can rest. What I'm really interested in is the bottom. So I'm gonna flip it around. Oi! Definitely we got those individual bones. And let's see now if this is gonna work. And while we let it rest, we might as well come up with a delicious topping. That's why I chopped up a couple of onions, saute them in a pan with a whole lot of butter. And of course, a little bit of that Pitmaster X Texas barbecue rub. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut through the first piece right there. And then we can serve this up. Look at that, one individual serving of bone while cooked all together in one piece. That's kind of neat. I kind of like it. It is a good trick. Of course, it's a little bit of fiddling, but if you want to serve it up straight away, you don't have to serve the full bone because let's be real. This is more of a normal portion. I think this is around 300 to 400 grams of meat and that will fill you up most definitely. Let's take a closer look at this. Wow. That looks freaking amazing. Oh. Still a little bit hot. There we go. Full test. Whoa. Tender. Mmm. That is good. Oh. Mm. I got one more thing coming to make it even better. Now it's time for our topping, but before we do that, I'm gonna heat up some whiskey Tennessee fire. Plate up a piece of beef rib, top it with the onions, and then pour on the whiskey. The thing is with these beef ribs, they build up so much flavor in the crust. It is insane. It's a little bit rough of a technique, grilling them over open fire, which means you will not get the extreme tender experience you get from smoked beef ribs, but still, it's one of my favorite just because of the power and flavor. 
And once we topped it off with a little bit of onion, some burning whiskey, you're gonna have one of the most amazing things ever. And that method of cutting it in half is just pure genius. Mm. I'll let my busher know. We're ordering some more. <laughs>